What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Classic Mustangs 429. We're working on the 65 Comet today, getting the brakes all tied up so we can get the car moving and mobile to get that engine in. If you have never done a drum to disc brake conversion, believe me when I tell you this, it is extremely easy, especially when you're getting every single component in kits like these. Guys, honestly, if you're still running drum brakes, I think it's time that you make the change to disc brakes. So this is what Lee Brakes has sent over for the 65 Comet. It is a front manual drum to disc conversion kit. We are keeping the drum brakes on the rear. Lee Brakes also sent over a brake pressure gauge kit, as you can see here. Basically, it's gonna show you how much PSI you have at your front or rear. And uh, they should give you a, quite a few adapters to make it pretty well universal for any of your braking components. I'm going to leave a link in the description below for their actual website for any of you that are looking for disc brake conversion for your classic cars. So we're going to get these installed and get this car rolling once again so we can get to work on that engine and trans install. Alright, so just looking over the instructions for the master cylinder. Slightly different than the Mustang. The Mustang didn't have this uh, situated here. I don't even think it had a distribution block like this. I think it ran into the original and then it just had the proportioning valve for the rear brakes. This is a whole, a whole distribution block in a sense. So it's going to utilize the lines there, which I'm actually going to re-bend because I don't like the look of all that. There you can see the original janky <laughs> distribution in the sense of brakes. It's an adapter and another adapter, and then there's a plug here. It's, it's just a mess. So uh, this is going to the right, this is going to the rear, and this is going to the front left. So I'm just gonna re-bend those when it comes time, and it should be pretty good. Also another nice feature is actually the brake light switch here, which is built into the block. I've had problems in the past with um, Mustang brake light switches, so this is a, a nice little fix here. All right, so the fact that we already stripped the original drum brakes off, like I showed you, it's simply taking the, the main nut, washer, bearing retainers, and uh, re removing these four nuts from the backside and that whole drum brake assembly comes off. So it's really not necessary to, to take apart the entirety of the drum brake assembly, taking the shoes off and all that. Just leave it all attached and just slide that whole assembly. You'll probably have to tap it a few times. You also have to cut the original brake lines, which is no big deal because we're replacing those anyways. Majority of the time, they're all checked and cracked. So give her a snip and then slide that whole assembly off. And now we're ready to start putting the new assembly together caliper always goes to the front side of the car you're going to install the dust shield grab some hardware I usually start with the shorties line up the holes you get two lined up the rest should go in relatively easy the longer one goes to the back which is where the steering arm is and then one more smaller one at the front with the nuts on the back All right, so I'm gonna get the bearings all packed and ready for install. This is the messy part of the job. <laughs> There's a, I guess a modern way of packing bearings now, which is a tool, kind of like a siphon tube. But around here we do it the old style way, which uh, involves getting your hands a little dirty. What isn't dirty about mechanics? Okay, we got our bearings all situated here. I have the races at the bottom, so I can just quickly pop these in and sit them in place. We got our high temp uh, disc brake wheel bearing grease, which is almost out. Time for a refill. You're gonna stick your finger in there, nice big blob on your palm, grab your bearing. On the back side, you're gonna press it down against your hand, which forces the grease up in between the bearing and the retainer and I guess the inner inner race and you'll eventually start to see the grease popping out the top. Once you see the grease popping out of the top, bearing is packed and just slowly work your way around. 
slowly forcing the grease out of there, or I guess forcing it in until it pops out the top. Once that's done, I like to give it a good little spin, possibly another repack just to make sure. Coat the outside of the bearings in some grease as well, and then uh, get it installed. Give it a good spin. Coat the outer bearings, making sure everything has a nice healthy coating of grease. And if you want to double check, to make sure that it's got a nice fill of grease in there. Just give it another quick little pack. It'll be good to go. Just plop it back in the bearing brace. Get on to the next one. Don't bother cleaning your hands until you're all done. So after you are all done that, you probably look like you murdered someone. Well, at least if you have red bearing grease, I guess. Maybe if uh, you have some blue, it looks like you killed a Smurf. Got some yellow one. Maybe you killed an alien. CIA is going to be all over you. Who knows? They're probably listening to this video right now. Anyways, once you're all done there, give yourself a little lather. Nice little morning lotion. I don't know why I clean my hands, because I'm going to get them greasy again. Grab your rotor, place it right there. Now inside the bearing race and basically coating the entirety of this rotor is kind of like an oily residue. So just grab some brake clean, clean the inside of the race. And obviously before you put your caliper on and before you do any braking, clean the outside of the rotor and same with the front race. So there you can see a bit of dirt in there. Once that's all clean, I'm going to grab grease again. Just give a quick little, little dab in there on the bearing race itself. A little extra lube never hurt anybody. Grab your larger bearing, get it installed there. Grab your seal, place it on. I grab a hammer. I have a, a body die and I'm just going to lightly tap that all into place. I'm going to do it on the ground because I don't trust this, uh, this table here. Get it on the ground, lightly tap it all until it's fully seated, and then you're ready to install your rotor assembly and your front bearing. So we're gonna do that right now. That's all done. You're gonna do the same to this one. Get them both ready so that install is a lot quicker and a lot easier to do. Should be ready to go. I'm gonna do that right meow. You know, Mike, it would have been a splendid idea for you to grab a, a ratchet and not just the socket. Maybe even a wrench. A wrench would have worked. Now you're all comfortable and now you got to get up. Ugh. Ugh. All right, here we go. Don't forget to torque your stuff, people. Don't forget to torque your stuff. I'm looking forward to when I smash my knuckles. Come on. Right. Straighten that back out. Grab our rotor assembly. Clean this off, make sure this is all nice and clean. Slather it on there. Well, grease never hurt anybody. Well, besides the fact that it's petroleum based, it probably causes cancer. But other than that, it's totally fine. It especially causes cancer in California. Grab your outer bearing, slip him on. Grab your bearing, retainer, as we'll call it a flat washer. Then grab your castle nut. Give her a spin. Let those bearings get seated. Feels pretty good. In the instructions, it says to rotate the rotor while tightening the spindle nut to 18 to 24 foot pounds. Next, back off the adjustment nut half a turn and retighten to 10 to 15 pounds while aligning the retaining slot for the cotter pin uh, hole in the spindle. So we're gonna do that. It's an inch and an eighth. So we're 
we're going to suspend this. Okay, spin it. We'll hear a click. Okay, that's your torque. Back off the adjustment nut about a half a turn. Away. It's quarter. Half. And retighten to 10 to 15. Okay, you gotta really listen to it because it's very quiet. That is done to spec. Next, we're gonna clean off the rotor. Give it a good soak. There you can see all the dirt. I'm gonna soak it again. Run it here. Let it clean the backside. Okay, and there's the backside. Next, we're gonna grab our caliper. Three quarter head bolts. Absorb all of that cleaner into your brain. And these bolts get torqued to 45 to 60 foot pounds. And those QA1 coilovers look really nice. We are golden, folks. Golden. Actually, we're kind of like zinc coated, but yeah, you get the picture. It's going to require a hammer because it's got quite the, the nipples that keep it in place. But nonetheless, you get the gist of how beautiful and how easy and simple it is to install a kit like this. All right, so next we're gonna take off the brake line. And you wanna know what is so nice about Arizona cars? You ready? With a thumb. With my thumb. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Once that line's off, we're gonna pop this clip off. The whole cut line should be able to come off at that point. We're gonna install the new line where that yellow fitting is right there. Once that's done, we're gonna secure it back into this location, put the new clip in, and put the old fitting back in. All right, got the new line all installed. As you can see there, new clip, same original line, obviously not original to the car, but a brand new brake line all the way to the caliper with the copper washer there, just to make sure it seals. We are done, people. We are done. All right, so now that the brakes are all installed on the front, we are going to put the wheels back on and get it back on the ground. This is also going to show the QA1s first time on the ground, so that's also exciting. Super sketchy this can get. You're kidding. Just, just enough. We're down on all four folks. Now I'm sure once an engine and transmission and radiator and hood and all that other parts are back in the car she's going to settle down quite a bit it's maxed out at the lowest setting right now so we're going to hop in the engine bay start taking apart the old master cylinder and get ready for the new one to get installed well that's a kick in the shorts god dang it uh, i guess this is a uh, not a compatible wheel 
with uh, these disc brakes. All right, well, time to take the wheel off. All right, so I got this rim here, uh, just one from the shed. And as you can see, it doesn't make any contact with the caliper, and I'm gonna show you why. All right, so here you can see the steppage of the wheel, and basically what's happening right now is the caliper is hitting this ridge right here. When we slide over to this wheel here, you can see that that ridge is a lot further down in comparison to that one. You can see the rivets of the, the inner rim. This one is about uh, an inch or two, or inch and a half uh, taller compared to that one. That's right on the right on the rivet line. So this one works, that one doesn't. So I'm either gonna clean up the face of that one and swap tires onto this one, or run those American racing wheels. Not sure yet. Not sure, not sure. All right, first things first, we're gonna crack these lines, take them off of the single reservoir master cylinder. Then we're gonna go and zip these bolts out here and then go inside the car, break our necks and back and take the push rod out. All right, back's broken. <laughs> we're underneath the dash and you can see here is the original Ford brake switch with that cotter pin that we are hairpin, whichever you wish to call it, that we're gonna take out. I just threw in one of the bolts back in right there, just so the master cylinder doesn't fall once I take that hairpin out and push the push rod out off the brake pedal. But as you can see here, when I activate the brake pedal, you can see the action at the master cylinder. I'm gonna take that all apart so I can get out of this freaking mess. All right, master cylinder is out. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the new master cylinder, just so I have a rough idea of where the lines are gonna go um, into the distribution block, or proportioning valve, whichever you wish to call it. And then from there on, I'm going to start bending along the firewall and along down here. And this one is obviously gonna be what it's gonna be. It's a pretty short run, so yeah, cleaning it up clean it up and uh, hopefully soon there will be an engine where I'm standing. All right, so we got the master cylinder and all the lines routed. Let's uh, take a peek. All right, so here you can see all the lines. The one at the back is going down to the rear. This one right here to the right or in the front, I guess, of the master cylinder is going to the left front. And then this other one is going against the firewall relatively contoured still got to straighten that corner out a touch and then going to the right so much better than what it was much happier with it more uh i guess streamlined and much nicer in my opinion of where it's routed now we're gonna take the master cylinder off bench bleed it and get it ready for install All right, got the master all installed with the proportioning valve. Painted the master so it's not gonna rust right away. But all the lines are hooked up. One in the back. Now we're just waiting to see if there's any leaks. If there's any leaks, tighten up the fittings. So what I did was I already had the master and proportioning valve together when I put the whole assembly in. I didn't try to put the proportioning valve on when it was in the car because it's really, really tight to get those uh, those two fittings underneath. You can't see this one. One and two are really tight. You can't get a wrench in there like barely, even when it's off the car. So it's always recommended to do this outside of the car. And then slide this whole assembly in at once and hook up your lines and you should be golden. All right, got the steel rim all heated up and straightened out. That was a lot worse than what it is. Sandblast this. So it's all clean and then I can paint it just like that one and we should be decent. All right, so got the rims all primered yesterday, going to shoot them with a fresh coat of black paint today and hopefully get them installed by the end of today on the original tires. All right, there's the rims all painted up. I think they look pretty good. Let's see how scratched we can get. I'm trying to install some tires. <laughs> oh boy.
All right, so we got the wheels mounted on the tires that were on the Comet prior, and uh, everything's holding, uh, holding air, which is great. Might have broken my thumb in the process. This is super swollen right now. I got it. Uh, uh, basically, the tire machine swung and uh, hit me pretty good in the hand. But anyways, all that matters is that the tires are holding air. We're gonna get those installed so we can get the car rolling. Well, I guess this is something I should have checked. Uh, Last time I put the wheel on. Perfect. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. We got the brakes installed, but there's a lot more work to be done. And as you can see behind me, we're already a couple steps ahead. So we got the steering column going in next episode, hydraulic clutch, clutch pedal assembly, engine and transmission. So stay tuned for the next episode. If you like what you saw, please hit that like and subscribe button below to support the channel. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.